So, hello and welcome to the first section. In this section, we are going to have a little introduction to what is a chest x-ray, why is it important, and how is it done. So, let's get started. So, first, why should I know how to read a chest x-ray? Well, simply it's the most common film taken in medicine, and a chest x-ray review is a key competency for medical students, junior doctors, and other allied health professionals. And that's of course because it's a very simple as it requires no previous preparations and can be done in less than a minute, right? It also costs less than most of the other radiological investigations, but at the same time it's quite sensitive and has an excellent resolution due to the presence of air in the lungs. Now before discussing image quality, let me remind you that when you're looking to a patient CXR, then the patient's right side is the left side of the image we're looking at, and vice versa, as if you're looking to a patient standing in front of you. Anyway, always check the right or left markings as this are for right in this patient, and don't assume that always the heart is on the left. Some abnormalities might push or pull the heart with the mediastinum to the right, so that radiographers always safeguard against this by marking the film right or left. Now after confirming details of the CXR, briefly assess the quality of the image using the mnemonic RIPE for rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure. And we'll start with rotation. Actually, identifying of patient's rotation is really important as it may result in the normal thoracic anatomy becoming distorted. And how to assess rotation? Well, in a well-centered X-ray, the medial end of the clavicles should be equidistant from the spinous process. So, the distance here will be the same as here. And what if the patient is rotated? To simplify things, let's say that normally the patient will be like this. The orange and white dots represent the medial end of clavicles and the white triangle represent the spinous process and here how they will be presented normally in a CXR. But if the patient is rotated to the right, then the medial end of the left clavicle will be presented closer to the spinous process than the right one. Like in this X-ray, here is the left clavicle and here is the right one, you see? And here are the spinous processes. We can see clearly how the medial end of the left clavicle is closer to the spinous processes than the right one. So the patient is rotated to the right. And if the patient is rotated to the left, then the medial end of the right clavicle will be presented closer to the spinous process than the left one, as in this X-ray. Here is the medial end of the left clavicle and here is the medial end of the right one and here are spinous processes. We can see clearly how spinous processes are closer to the medial end of the right clavicle than the left one so the patient is rotated to the left. And now let's move on to inspiration. To assess the degree of inspiration Simply just count the posterior ribs, and if a chest X-ray is obtained in optimum inspiration, you'll be able to count 8 to 10 ribs above the left hemidiaphragm. And by the way, the ribs that are seen the best are the posterior ribs. So, let's take this normal X-ray as an example. Here's the first rib, okay, here's the second one, here's the third one, and so on, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So here we can count 10 posterior ribs above the left hemidiaphragm. And here is an example of expiratory film versus inspiratory film for the same patient. We can see how here lung bases appear whiter and heart size appears larger in the expiratory film. Now after rotation and inspiration, let's move on to projection. To do a CXR, there are different views or projections of the chest that can be obtained by changing the relative orientation of the body and the direction of the X-ray beam. The most common one is called posterior-anterior or PA view, 
where the X-ray source is positioned so that the X-ray beam enters through the posterior or back aspect of the chest and exits out of the anterior or frontal aspect, where the beam is detected by a detector represented by this white line. As in this picture, we can see that the patient is standing and facing a flat surface which contains an X-ray detector, and a radiation source is positioned behind the patient at a standard distance, about 1.8 meters or 6 feet, and the X-ray beam is fired toward the patient. So this is the posterior anterior or PA view. Another view is called anterior posterior or AB view, in which the positions of the X-ray source and detector are reversed. And here, you'll ask yourself, so what? What's the difference? Well, let me tell you that the difference is great, and I'll tell you why. It's all about the heart and mediastinum. Now, first, remember that the heart is closer to the anterior chest wall than the posterior one, okay? So, when the X-ray beam passes through the patient from back to front onto the film, as in PA film, the heart and mediastinum are thus closest to the film and therefore not magnified. Compare it with when the X-ray is taken in an AP position, such as when the patient is unwell in bed, the heart and mediastinum are distant from the cassette and are therefore subject to X-ray magnification. As a result, it's very difficult to make an accurate assessment of the cardiomediastinal contour on an AP film. And here's an example. The cardiomediastinal contour is significantly magnified on this AB film, and here's the PA film for the same patient, and we can see that the mediastinum appears normal. Now, there are other views of the X-ray beside PA and AB views, like the lateral view, in which the patient stands with both arms raised and the left side of the chest pressed against a flat surface, and the result will be like this. Don't worry now about how to read this image. We'll come to this in details in the next lectures. And the fourth view of a chest X-ray is called lateral decubitus, which is taken while the patient is lying down typically on his or her side. Now, it's not usually used, but it's been useful for differentiating pleural effusions from consolidation due to other reasons like pneumonia. Like this case here, we can see that there is increased density in the left costophrenic angle compared with the right one. And by the way, what is costophrenic angle? It's this angle between the lungs and diaphragm. Now, is this increased density due to fluid accumulation, i.e. pleural effusion? Is the fluid mobile or not? Here, a lateral decubitus view can be helpful, which shows pleural fluid freely layering against the now gravity-dependent lateral chest wall. And the fifth view we'll talk about is called lordotic view. But to understand why we need this view, take a look at a usual PA view. You can see that apices of the lung aren't fully clear because of the clavicles or collar bones, which are this bone in red right here. To overcome this problem, when the anatomy of interest is the lung apices, to pick up abnormalities such as Banco's tumor, we ask the patient to stand with feet approximately 30 cm away from the image receptor, with back arced until upper back, shoulders, and head are against the image receptor. And the result, as we can see, that clavicles are projected superiorly, clear of the lung fields, and now we can assess the apices clearly. And now, the final type of views we'll talk about are the oblique views, which are useful for visualization of the ribs. The idea behind this technique is to assess the middle part of the rib between the posterior and anterior part, this part right here, as fractures in this part can be missed in a regular CX or even with optimized projections. Thus, there are four types of oblique views we can do based on the ribs we want to focus on. So, there are left anterior oblique, right anterior oblique, left posterior oblique, and right posterior oblique. Just place the ribs you want closer to the receptor, and the result will be like this. You can almost see the whole rib here. Now, we move on to the final technical factor, 
which is exposure or penetration. Penetration refers to the amount of X-ray that are passing through the area that's being evaluated. And penetration can differ based on the patient's body type. So if a film is over penetrated like here, that means everything will appear very dark and that's mimic abnormalities such as pneumothorax. And if a film is under penetrated, then everything will look whiter and that can make it very difficult to actually see what's going on in the lungs. And this is what a CXR with optimal exposure would be, in which you can see the left hemidiaphragm is visible to the spine and vertebrae are visible behind the heart, while here you can't. You can also see pulmonary vessels, while in overexposed image you can't. So this is how to assess the CXR quality. Let's sum up what we've said. First, is the patient rotated? Do medial ends of clavicles appear equidistant from the spinous process? Then for inspiration, can you count 8 to 10 ribs above the left hemidiaphragm? Then for projection, is the image BA, which is the most common one, or AP, lateral, lordotic, or oblique? And finally, for the exposure, is the left hemidiaphragm visible to the spine and vertebrae are visible behind the heart? In the next lecture, we'll have a quick anatomical review of which organs we'll see in a CXR.